you do much wiring, you've probably seen these guys a bit. Some of them come in a pistol grip. Some of them can convert back and forth, and others are just static fixed. Most will have some sort of a torque limiting clutch, however, um, not all do. And my understanding is that these small, almost single cell or dual cell tools are pretty much limited to just low torque screw driving. Current DeWalt series I think also makes one that's essentially this with a reamer on it. This AEG of course is on the same people who make Milwaukee. They actually make the Panasonic ones as well. I believe they just contract them out for Panasonic. The problem you're going to come across is these tools are built to a little bit higher standard and they are pretty light duty task tools so unless you drop them constantly the batteries are probably going to die on them before the tools do. And as they age, something like an old NICAD battery, if you can still get it, it's probably just going to be some sort of a cheap aftermarket. If you still have a good one of these pinouts on it, so that way I can um, just hardwire the thing in. The NICAD, but my understanding is they are drop replaceable with the nickel metal hydrate ones as well. In this orientation, we have a positive, a negative, and then a temp sensor. And then of course it's keyed. And I'm not sure if this is a thigh wrister or just a thermocouple. Of course, being dead to me, I can't tell you exactly. It's rated at 2.4 volts. I would say you're probably safe to give it three volts or so. So the orientation for this is we basically have this keyed section on top, which is gonna fit that temp sense. And then we have the common on the left and the positive on the right. And for the DeWalts, there are more pins on the batteries. Clearly, we just have some redundancy. If you look at the actual contacts inside, all that really matters is we have one piece going to a negative, one going to positive, and then we have the, uh, again, it's labeled TH, so I think that's either thyristor or thermocouple. And that would be the opposite side of the keyed side. So the key side would be the inert one. Supposedly that's for some sort of charging circuitry. So with the key facing down, you would have negative on the left, positive on the right, and again, no matter which terminals those are, those are internally shorted together. Thermal couple or uh, thyristor sensor is going to be on the opposing side of the keyed, and that's pretty obvious if you have the tool in front of you. That being the TH thermocouple or sensing right there. So this being an 8 volt system, I'm guessing it's going to be quite lower than that. So we've got about 7 volts right now. Uh, this is not a topped off battery, but that's pretty normal operation. I did run it a little bit beforehand just to make sure there wasn't any floating charge on top of it. Um, and just for the sake of argument, let's check this side as well. Same thing, 693. And just to check if these are internally connected, I'm sure they are. So the common side is, and the positive side is as well. Uh, just out of curiosity, so that's our sensor. It's not shorted to that, which would make sense. However, it does appear this other pin, which is labeled CT, is a dead short to that thermocouple or the sensor. So now that we know the pinouts on these and we know the operating voltage, the one last thing we need to figure out is if we're just going to hardwire this to DC power, whether or not we need to have something for this thermocouple sensor, or if it could just be completely emitted, or if it needs to be shorted to something in order for it to work. Based on the fact that we did not see the th sensor shorted to ground in the normal state, I'm guessing that we do not want that necessarily shorted straight to ground, but we might need to have some sort of resistance across it. So first up is the AEG slash Panasonic Milwaukee style. Uh, you can see those pins are quite deep in there. What I'm going to use is just a couple of precision screwdrivers to poke those in all the way. So following that keen, I've used a black oxide screwdriver for the negative or the common and a chrome screwdriver for the positive. Then we'll attach three volts. Current limited to half an amp. It looks like it's pulling a lot more than half an amp. Let's bring that amperage up. So now that I got that set up, I have three volts at about five amps current limited. And it looks like it's just starting to come 
back to life here. Looks like it's pulling about 4.3 amps, 3 volts, and that's with no load applied to it. So give you an idea of what kind of power supply you'd need. Looks like for the DeWalt, just using straight alligator clips is gonna be the better option. So again, we'll just pay attention to that orientation. So we have negative or common on the left. When the key is down, positive on the right. I'm gonna try eight volts, current limited to three amps. Again, because this is a gyroscope, I'm just gonna hold on to the button then I have to tilt it. it. Does look like the LED did turn on immediately. And with this newer DeWalt, having just the positive and the negative hooked up, I am not able to get it to pull any current beyond just turning the LED light on. You'll notice that it does have this battery indicator on there. And normally how you, this would work is you hold the button in and you twist, uh, but it's only pulling about 32 milliamps, which just appears to be that LED. So somehow that sensor in the battery is necessary on this DeWalt 8 volt series. So looking at this battery a second time, it does appear that these intermediate terminals are just shorted together. Going from that center to the outer negative, looks like we have a 10K resistor. That's what you're looking at. Put a 10K resistor between these two suckers and I bet that thing's gonna work. If this wasn't working, I'd be willing to tear it apart. It doesn't look like it's too difficult. You do have these two metal clips. Uh, so pull those out and then you're gonna have a couple screws in here to pull out. Uh, but it shouldn't be anything too difficult. It looks like we have four torques on this side and you might have to pull off. Um, part of this front receiver as well. I don't know how many amps it's going to draw based on that other Panasonic We saw around five six amps At three volts, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to see something similar to that Even though it's up at eight volts give you an idea of what kind of power supply you're going to need So I hope this helps you out if you've had any uh, If you've been looking to figure out how to get these batteries to work um, or if you want to run this off a of DC you could always just run a similar battery pack. I would guess that even at five or six volts, this thing would run pretty well. So you might be able to find like some sort of a USB single cell 16850 that you could stick in here that would convert up to five volts and run it off of that. Well, as always, have a good day. Let me know if this helps you out or if you have anything to add to it. Thanks.